Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. We're here with part 13, I believe, of our look at the half more material. And today we're going to be co uh, covering the golden octahedron. So last week we did the atom. And then the week before that, we did the infinity sign, which are, are different patterns that you can use with your eyes to create almost like an EMDR reaction of healing the brain and the neurological responses in the brain. Of course, this was all created by Tom Kenyon, who is the author of this book. And of course, he channels and works with the half wars. He also has a background in education of the mind. Um, I had some questions last week that I want to cover. Somebody asked if they're supposed to do all the patternings together. From what I understand, from what we read, is that, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that for one week you work with the infinity sign the next week you work with the atom and the third week you work with the golden octahedron which we're going to cover today and then i think you can start doing them all three of them together in one day now with that being said again even though i'm reading through this on my channel and you can go through and listen to all the, the playlists the playback of all the chapters i would highly suggest that if you're super interested in using this healing technique and this healing mo mo uh, modality or at least trying it getting this book for yourself okay i really would suggest doing that i am going to put a link to the book down in the description box below it's very easy to get your hands on and so i would absolutely suggest getting it for yourself so that you have the material with you and you can go back and reference it reread it on your own if this is something that you seriously want to do or try to do to help you in your work with that being said i think i asked this last week if you are someone who has been doing these practices let me know how it's going down in the description box below. All right. Now, of course, this week we're finishing up with the golden octahedron. The next week we're going to get into some more stuff in this book. I already kind of looked ahead and I'm really excited about what we're getting into next week. But let's go ahead and get started this week with the golden octahedron. This is uh, 2.9 and this is starting us off on page 165 in my book. If you do have the book and you are following along. All right. This pattern uses an octahedron, an eight-sided polyhedron. Each of the eight sides of the octahedron are equal, is an equilateral triangle. Another way to think of an octahedron is to imagine a two-squared two, uh, two base pyramid joined at the base. We see that here, so C diagram three, so the two pyramids joined at the base. So again, octo is eight, so octahedron, eight-pointed uh, diagram, right? There are three distinct phases to this geometric sequence. This sequence is not as complex as the atom pattern at first glance. However, in actuality, it can be more demanding due to its radical shiftings of perspective. The first phase involves the rotation of an imaginary octahedron in the center of your head. There are several directional shifts during this phase, and each one of them challenges your brain or mind to meet the task of shifting the direction of the rotating geometry. The second phase involves radical shifts in a special perception due to the fact that you will be viewing the octahedron in the center of your head from multiple perspectives, including four perspectives that are outside of your physical body. The, this phase lays the foundation for the multidimensional perception, allowing you to view or experience multiple perspectives, including non-physical reality simultaneously. The Hathors contend that this type of multidimensional ability will be crucial to us when we move into a more complex global and galactic reality. The eyes are very important, aren't they? We Again, we talked about that a lot last week with the Atom and EMDR therapy, which I will put both the Atom and the Infinity sign down in the description box below so you have the three pairs together. And we also know that the eyes are the windows to the soul right? They're, the, they're also, the eyes are the tops of Shashumna, the canal that carries the channel of energy that carries Kundalini up the spine. The eyes are very, uh, very, very powerful. So our perception through our literal sight and our perceived sights are very important. According to the Hathars, the third and final phase of this geometry transfer non-local healing and transformational energy into your brain mind via the chakra energetic portals above your head. So I kind of what I was just saying about Shishumna. Yeah. The esoteric natric nature of octahedrons. The octahedron is one of five platonic solids, which were highly significant to the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, for whom they are named. 
Love me some Plato. We talk about Plato a lot on this channel. While his name is associated with the five cardinal ge geometric forms, they have actually been known since antiquity. According to some scholars, the late Neolithic people of Scotland carved or ornamental versions of the five solid at least a thousand years before Plato. And once again, you guys, like I'm not, if you've been on this channel for a while, I'm very skeptical of dating, um, especially since we're being presented with all the Tartaria information. I'm very skeptical of the way that they've dated stuff. And we know that with, with science, like science meeting history, we know that science, it's always a matter of practicing science, like like we call it practicing medicine. It's always just a practice. You know, in my opinion, true science is something that's always in question. And so I do kind of question dates, but that's, again, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know why. If you haven't been on this channel for a while, that's a story for a different day. Plato wrote extensively about the five solids of his dialogue, Timarius, circa 360 BC, and associated each of the four classical elements in earth, air, fire, and water, with one of the solids. He associated with earth with the cube, while air was associated with the octahedron. Water was associated with the icosahedron, and fire was with the tetrahedron. For Plato, there were deep intuitive justifications for the various associations, and they became central to some of his philosophical ideas. Plato was also a member of the mystery schools that we've spoken about on this channel, too. The Hathors view the octahedron in terms of its energetic properties. By this, they mean that all geometries compel energy to flow in specific ways, as I mentioned earlier. Due to the fact that the octahedron consists of two square-based pyramids, those sides are equal lateral triangles, the octahedron imparts an energetic sense of balance, according to the Hathors. While I view this third and final geometry of the training solely in terms of its neurological effects on the spatial areas of the brain, the Hathors go further. They say that the utilization of the octahedron not only changes the spatial capabilities of the mind and brain, they say that it imparts subtle energetic properties that are balancing in nature. Furthermore, they contend that the golden octahedron imparts balanced energe energetics during the third and final phase of the pattern in which non-local transformational and healing energies are introduced into the nervous system. Which makes sense. I know a lot of you guys are attuned in Reiki, and Reiki involves patterning, creating patterns that then get integrated into the system. Yeah? The golden octahedron sequence, phase one. Imagine a small golden octahedron in the center of your head, and imagine the, the geometry in the vertical, vertical position with one of its edges aligned with the bridge of your nose. Now begin to spin the octahedron in a clockwise direction, meaning that the edge of the oct octahedron, the edge that you aligned with the bridge of your nose, will spin from its center position to your right side and continue spinning around until it winds up back where it started. Spin the golden octahedron in the direction for 30 seconds to a minute. Before you are spinning it slowly, be sure you are spinning it slowly and that you are following its rotation with your full attention. When your mind wanders, bring it back to this spinning octahedron. Number three, stop the octahedron from spinning and then reverse direction, rotating it in a counterclockwise direction, meaning that the edge you aligned with the bridge of your nose will now spin from its center position to your left side and continue spinning until it winds back to where it started. Spin the golden octahedron in this direction for 30 seconds to a minute. Next, stop the, hot, the octahedron from spinning and flip it to its side. Now, rotate the octahedron so that it's rolling over in place towards the bridge of your nose. It almost seems like, you know, those twisty toys, like those tops that we used to have as kids. I don't know if kids today still have these toys because everything's so electronic today. But, you know, you still, it was like a, it was like half of an octahedron and it had a little top on it. You would spin it and spin it and you could spin it the other way. That's what it seems like, but it's happening in your mind's eye, in your head. Spin the golden octahedron in this direction for 30 seconds to a minute. Now stop the rotation of the octahedron in reverse its direction so that it's rolling over in place away from the bridge of your nose. Spin the golden octahedron in this direction for 30 seconds to a minute. 
So you're basically, from what it sounds like, he's basically taking every single eight-pointed side of the octahedron, placing it as the balance point, and spinning it in both directions, then flipping to another balance point, spinning it in both directions. I think that's what he's saying. Let me know if you think he's saying something different. Flip the golden octahedron over so that it's now resting in its final orientation. This completes phase one. Phase two. In this phase, you will be viewing the octahedron from multiple perspectives. This shift in perspective can be challenging at first, but once you are familiar with the shifts, they will seem quite natural. The important thing is to make sure you are relaxed state of mind. This is not concentration, but relaxed focus of attention. You will be moving through five different viewing perspectives, each one progressively more challenging to your spatula abilities. Spatula sequencing. Number one. Imagine the golden octahedron resting at the center of your head. Now imagine that you are viewing the octahedron from the position that it's at the very back of your head. See diagram 3E. So now your perception of looking at the option, ob object has changed directions, right? It may be helpful to imagine that a tiny version of you is standing at the back of your head and viewing the octahedron from this perspective. View the octahedron from this perspective for about 30 seconds. When your mind wanders, bring it back. If your perception shifts from this position, return your focus of attention back to this area. Number two. Next, shift your perspective from the back of your head as in step one up to an imaginary point about one foot or about 30 centimeters directly above the back of your head. See diagram 3F. This means that you will be viewing the octahedron from a slight angle. It may be helpful to imagine a tiny version of yourself standing outside of your body looking down at the octahedron as you float one foot or 30 centimeters up above the back of your head. View the octahedron from this perspective for about 30 seconds. When your mind wanders, bring it back. If your perceptive shifts from this position, bring your fo focus of attention to this location. Three. Now shift your perspective up another foot, about 30 centimeters, to an imaginary point further above the back of your head. This means that you will now be viewing the octahedron from a perspective two feet, about 60 centimeters, up, uh, directly above the back of your head. So you're just moving your mind's eye further away from what it's seeing. It may be helpful to imagine a tiny version of yourself standing outside of your body looking down at the octahedron as you float two feet above the back of your head. View the octahedron from this perspective for about 30 seconds. When your mind wanders, bring it back. If your perspective shifts, return your focus of attention to this location. Next, shift your perspective up about another foot above the back of your head. This means that you will be now viewing the octahedron from about three feet or 90 centimeters perspective above the back of your head. It may, be, it may be helpful to imagine a tiny version of yourself standing outside of your body and looking down at the octahedron as you float three feet or 90 centimeters above the back of your head. View the octahedron from this extreme perspective for about 30 seconds. When your mind wanders, bring it back. If your perspective shifts from this possession, bring the focus of attention back to this location. Five. Next, you will move your viewing position forward from three feet directly above the back of your head to a position that is directly above the crown of your head. This means that you will be looking straight down on the octahedron and or sensing it in some other way from the space that is directly above your head. View the octahedron from this perspective for about 30 seconds. When your mind wanders, bring it back. If your perspective shifts from this position directly above your head, return your focus of attention to this location. In a final shift of perspective, slowly lower your perspective from three feet above your head directly down to the octahedron that is sitting in the center of your head. This completes phase two. Phase three. In this final phase of the geometry, you imagining a golden octahedron at the center of your head. Imagine a channel or a line that runs from the apex of the octahedron located in the center of your head up to the point about three feet above your head. Spin the octahedron in a clockwise direction around this channel that runs up the top of your head. This means that the octahedron will spin towards your right. Imagine that a gold light flows down from above your head into the golden octahedron as it spins. The gold light might stay inside of the octahedron or it might flow out of the octahedron into your brain. Allow this healing and transformative light to flow according to its own innate wisdom. Continue this for about 30 seconds or more if you wish. Next, 
Stop the rotation of the octahedron and then spin it counterclockwise around the channel that runs to the top of your head. This means that the octahedron will now spin towards your left. As you continue to spin the octahedron, imagine and sense gold light flowing down from the point about three feet above your head into the golden octahedron. As with the previous step, the gold light might stay inside the octahedron or it might flow out of the octahedron into your brain. Allow this healing and transformative light to flow according to its own innate wisdom. Continue with this for about 30 seconds or more if you wish. After you complete the second step, bring the rotation of the octahedron to a stop. Let your awareness of this octahedron go and focus on your breath, the quality of your thoughts and feelings, physical sensations, and the quality of your awareness. After this period of sensing the golden octahedron, take a few moments to rest. If you have time, it would be good to lie down and completely relax. You may even find yourself going to sleep. This type of rest is integrative in nature and is different in quality than your normal sleep state. This completes the golden octahedron. Advanced work. Please note, this advanced phase is not recorded on the comp companion CD, and quite frankly, it is so advanced that it would be overly challenging to most people. Most people will find phase two of this, challenging, of this pattern challenging enough. If, however, you would like to take this further, you can uh, enhance the effects of phase two by rotating the octahedron as you did in phase one. This means that you would go through phase one by rotating the octahedron through all four of its rotations, but you would view each of these rotations from each of the five perspectives as in phase two. Rotating the golden octahedron in different directions while viewing it from multiple perspectives is a demanding psychoneurological task. If you decide to give that a whirl, understand that this is a very advanced and challenging sequence requiring highly developed spatula skills. In other words, be patient with yourself. I would suggest you not engage this advanced sequence until you have clearly mastered the fundamentals of the golden octahedron pattern. And that's just very true in every type of healing. You can't bypass being a beginner. If you do try to bypass being a beginner, it's just going to um, come back to bite you in the ass. Okay. There are very necessary steps when it comes to working with any type of lineage of healing. So just keep that in mind. It's a, why, why do people not like being beginners? I don't understand that. Being a beginner is the best. You know, beginners and advanced students are the same as uh, in, in the sense that they both know they know nothing, but also they're different in the sense that in a beginner's mind, there are many possibility and possibilities in an advanced person's mind, there are few. So the beginning is the best part. Do not ever... Don't let your ego try to dissuade you from being a beginner because that's the best part. Take it slowly. Work it slowly. We don't want to have to come back and do this all over again. So do it thoroughly the first time. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And next week, we're going to get into the addendum, which has a lot of interesting stuff. I'm very excited. So all right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.